over here, Jewel Creek Organic Farm. I'm here in Karameas at the grist mill. Uh, this building was built in um, 1877 and uh, it's, uh, it's one in our environment that I wanted to see how it runs and see uh, you know, if they can run it year round. They say they can't run it year round. It, um, it does have to shut down in the wintertime because it freezes up. But um, this wheel behind me, which is, looks to be about maybe eight feet tall or so, and uh, just over two feet wide, it does um, about 20 horsepower, which is uh, pretty impressive. And if you look, if you look here, you can see like this fairly small little creek that um, the amount of water that's actually going into it. You'll see a few shots of the actual creek that uh, that feeds it. But um, yeah, there's just this this mill race here behind me. And that, uh, that feeds this mill, and um, when they shut the mill off, they just basically lift an arm and then let the water run out before it runs, hits the mill. So, yeah, if you look at it, it's a really simple paddle wheel. It's only a foot deep, and uh, it just straight paddles in. Um, so I'm hopeful that the, uh, the wheel that I'm building is going to produce some power. If you work it out, this is a two-inch shaft in pillow blocks. Um, it makes two, 20 horsepower like at the shaft approximately and uh, there's and transmission down so it's 10 rpm from 10 rpm it goes to 700 rpm based on just pulleys and um, uh, and belts uh, and yeah what I'm hoping to do is you know 10, 20 horsepower on this thing I hope that we can get you know five six horsepower out of our little wheel to test and each horsepower equates to about 750, I think it's 746 watts per, uh, is, is equal to a horsepower. So we'll see. Anyway, there's uh, a little bit of the grist mill here in Karameas. Check it out if you have a chance. Cheers. Hey, I'm with Tyler. Uh, Tyler is one of the gentlemen that runs the water wheel here in, uh, in Karameas. And uh, Tyler, introduce yourself and tell us about the wheel that we're here in front of. Here, we'll step in front of the wheel. We can see it in the, in the background. Well, this is a, a replica of the wheel that was here in 1877 when the mill started. Okay. We did some archaeology here and found the original timbers and found a good photograph of the next mill built by the same builders. So all the upper structure is based on that photograph from okay. the, the mill at Coldstream Ranch near Vernon. Oh, cool. So um, how, how old is this wheel here? This one was built in uh, right around the year 2000. Yeah, okay. So it's pushing 15 years. Okay. Uh, the first wheel rebuilt on the site here was 1984. Is that the one that's out front? And it's the one by the picnic area. And okay. it lasted about 15 years, and then it began to be unstable. Yeah. And so it was time to build a new one. Okay. And it was actually the structure that was more unstable than the wheel, the, uh, the support structure. But there was rock beginning to come in after 15 years. Yeah, yeah. And purposely didn't use treated wood. Don't want to poison the creek. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so it's just natural wood. Mm -hmm. um, if you imagine each bucket or each trough, they're called buckets in water wheels, holding about a pail of water. Yeah. And a pail of water, a full pail, weighs about 60 pounds. Yeah. There are 10 buckets all holding water, 600 pounds. The axle is six foot radius from the axle out to where the water is. Yeah. So imagine 600 pounds on the end of a broomstick and yeah. you're trying to hold it. That's the kind of torque that's involved in this. For sure. So it's uh, extremely powerful with just a little bit of water. Cool. Up above the wheel is a structure out of sight. It's called the water gate. And it's a board that goes right across the flume and it's a little dam. It cuts off the water supply. It's attached by a lever to the inside of the building. So when I push up on the lever, the water gate rises. And in the flume, it will let some water through onto the water wheel. Okay. There are steps, so I can raise it a lot or just a little, depending on how many machines are gonna be working inside and how much power I need. So you can control the power very finely with oh. just how much water goes on. So is this the full amount of water that comes to the wheel right now? It's this full is out? the full amount we've got because this is the overflow spout. So right now the water gate is closed and all the excess water is coming down the spout and heading on down the tail race. There are two races that are part of every water wheel. The head race brings water to it. Tail race takes it away. And we often think about the flume but often forget about the tail race. So yeah. you get rid of the water afterwards. That makes a difference here in terms of which way the wheel goes around. It's set up as what we call a backshot wheel. Yep. 
with the water dropping on this side of the axle so the wheel goes this way around. If it oh. dropped on the other side, it would be called foreshot and go the other way. Yeah, I see. If it went the other way, the X that the water being dumped and dropped would be spraying up this way. Yeah. It's uphill. Wrong side. Works better the other way. So it dumps the water out away from the mill downstream. And I've seen some mills also put the bottom of the wheel in the flow of the creek as well as because of on a backshot wheel, the water is, the wheel will be turning the same direction as the creek yeah. is flowing as well. It could be. Yeah. And, uh, the thing is about creek control, like here, we get creeks that rise and fall dramatically through the seasons. So you either have to control the creek water or control the motion of the wheel. <laughs> That's very complex. So how it's long? Better to keep it separate. Okay, cool. How long is the the mill race here? The the uh, flu race? What? Um, how long is that? Historically, it was about a quarter mile. Quarter mile, okay. And today we have 200 feet worth because there are properties that didn't exist 100 years ago. So we, we have access to 200 feet. We pump water in today. You do. And then we use it in the water wheel and then capture the water and repump it back again. So oh, really? We're not actually using the creek water today, but we could if we had uh, property access. But that would be a very expensive process. Today. Yeah. This is yeah. the location. Okay. The thing about being near the creek is it's it's not at all dependent on the creek water. It just means that you have to pick the creek water off and keep it at that height. At your head. You put the wheel anywhere you want it. But in this case, there's more room to work on this side of the building. For sure. And the creek on the other side will rise and fall as much as four feet from the winter to the summer. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Sure. Thanks for showing us the wheel.